My green or blue? What do you mean so I can film this? I don't What's going on, guys? <laughs> Isn't that being needed? <laughs> Oh man. What is going on guys? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on guys? My name is Nathaniel. Welcome to our channel, Dragon Blogger. Today we are going to be taking a look at the... What's going on guys? My name is Nathaniel and welcome back to our channel, Dragon Blogger. Today we're going to be taking a look at the SC201 dash cam from Cobra. Boom! So taking a look at the box here, it actually says that it has a front and cabin view, infrared cabin night vision, a 2 inch LCD screen, and it also has companionship with the Drive Smarter app. Drive harder, not smarter. <laughs> Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what all comes with it. All right, so we'll go ahead and open this thing up. You'll notice when you first open it, you'll be greeted with the card here that prompts you to download the Drive Smarter app, and you can do so by following the QR code at the bottom. And then it looks like the next thing you're going to be able to grab out of the box is the camera itself. Go ahead and set that aside. Open up this little box right here. And it looks like right here we get the power cable that goes into your 12 volt adapter inside of your car. And then if you go a little bit further, you're going to get the mounting system that is going to attach to your windshield or somewhere else and to your camera to mount the dash cam. And then here at the bottom, it looks like you get a little micro USB cable to data transfer. All right, so we're taking a look at the part of the dash cam that records the front of the vehicle. This records at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Also at the front, you'll see that they have right here the little Cobra branding. If we go to the top, you have your micro SD card slot, the mounting port, and then you also have a micro USB slot right here, as well as a reset button. Going to the back, you're going to see that you have your in-facing camera and the 2-inch LCD screen in order to be able to see what's going on inside your cabin. On the bottom, you have a power button, and then these three other buttons are going to give you access control. Okay, guys, so we're outside, and we're going to go ahead and install this in my wife's car. Let me show you how to get this thing set up. So in my wife's car, I went ahead and installed this thing already right underneath my rear view mirror on my raindrop sensor. It seems pretty secure, but one thing about this that's pretty cool is you can actually move this up and down and get it to the angle that you want it to be at without it falling in. It'll stay where you put it. So now coming over to the right side over here, the in-facing camera can actually angle itself in different positions. You know, depending if your car is different, you might want to put it a different way, but it's installed, let's go ahead and power it up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys all of the features that are built into the camera itself. I have it plugged in with the included 12 volt adapter into my car right now. So let's go to the bottom here. At the bottom, you have your power button. You can turn that on or off and you also have your menu access buttons. You also have a snapshot button, which is the second from right, and that's going to allow you to actually take a picture of the front and inside of your car. You have your audio on or off for your recordings, and then like I said, you have your stop button. When you come over here to the right and hit stop, it's gonna ask you, do you want to stop emergency recording? I'm gonna hit yes, so we can go ahead and open the menu. There are a lot of options here, so you guys need to keep up with me as I'll probably be talking pretty fast. So let's go ahead and open up the menu. The first setting we have is video resolution. You're going to be able to set that resolution so it's 1080p or 720p for the inside and outside of your car. I'm going to go ahead and select 1080p for both resolutions. It will take up more SD card space, but that's not that bad. Loop clip time, you can set that to however many minutes you want it to loop on recordings. You have Bluetooth, you have display, and the display is just going to change what you see on your 2-inch LCD display. You have date and time settings, which you can set your time zone or set it automatic or manual or daylight savings. So that's pretty cool. You have microphone, which should turn the microphone on or off. And then you have motion detection. When you go into this menu, it's actually going to ask you if you want motion detection on the front or the back of the camera. And I'm going to keep those off for now just because I'm not going to need something like that. You have parking mode, which will actually give you a little bit of guidance on parking, and then you have surveillance auto shut off. So if it's detecting that you're not moving, I believe what this will do is automatically turn off the recordings to save SD card space. Now, if you keep going, you have G sensor. Now the G sensor have different levels to where you can set how hard it is for it to pull up those Gs. 
you have watermark. Now this is going to be the watermark that is on the video recordings themselves. And what that is, is you can set it to have date and time, speed, GPS coordinates, driver ID, which you have to set up independently, and then a Cobra watermark. So tons of customization in the watermark settings that are gonna be on the video itself. Now you have exposure for the camera, button beep for when you're actually navigating the menus, then you're going to have screensaver, pretty self-explanatory. Interior night vision can be off or on. I'm gonna leave it on auto. Language, it has a bunch of languages here. It has Chinese, Spanish, Italian, French. So you're pretty much covered where you're at. Driver assistance. So now these are gonna be forward collision warnings. It's going to be your lane departure warning, speed alerts, and then you're also gonna be able to calibrate the all of these features in this menu. As you can see right here, this is going to allow you to calibrate and get everything centered. So let's go ahead and go back now. All right, now there's iRadar network alerts. You need another app to do that. I'll show you guys how to do that in a little bit. What this does is it gives you speed camera warnings, cop warnings that are all community based. Keep scrolling, you have Drive Smarter Services. You have auto backup videos. You also have your incident reporting and mayday alerts, which is something you have to set up in the app, which I'll show you how to do a little bit of that later. Speed units, miles per hour or kilometer per hour. Now you have volume. Volume is going to be how loud things are playing back from the unit itself. And you have WDR. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I'll leave a link in the description of this video when I figure that out. You have your GPS format right here. You keep going, you have your frequency. And then you also have your format reminder. And what that's going to do is that's going to tell you or give you a warning to format your SD card if it's getting too full. Restore default settings. You have format SD card and about. Those are all the settings. So this thing is absolutely loaded with settings and customization options. I don't think you're gonna have a problem getting this thing exactly the way you wanted to, but let's go ahead and get some road tests done and see what this thing does. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and test some of the features that are actually in the camera, including the microphone, maybe the lane departure and see how all that works. Before we do that, let's go ahead and set up the app. Now you can find the app by searching Smart Driver on your iOS device or your Android device. And once you download it, it'll ask you to register. You register, you have to verify a code through your email, and then you're ready to set it up. And the first thing that's gonna happen is it's actually going to use Bluetooth to find your dash camera. You see that it found the SC201 for me. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, hit continue. And then the dash cam had a little chime letting you know that you're connected to your phone. Now it's gonna ask you if you plan on using a mobile hotspot to connect to your dash cam. I'm not, so I'm gonna go ahead and click no. And then it's gonna ask you to set up your vehicle. I went ahead and put in all the information for my wife and her car. I'm gonna hit confirm connection. And then once you've confirmed your connection, you're gonna select which vehicle you're connecting to, hit connect camera, finish setup, and then it'll ask you if it's okay if it uses your location on your device. I'm gonna go ahead and allow. And also, if the dash cam has a pending firmware update, you can actually push that now. We'll go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so now we're actually on our road test recording. As you can see, everything is actually pretty smooth. And you see that it actually does have a watermark for the time at the bottom right now, which is a very nice feature just so if you're looking for videos or you need video proof of you know an accident that might have happened or something you captured, you have that. As you can see, everything is pretty smooth. It's recording audio pretty clearly. Everything looks nice. And you can actually turn off the audio if you don't want that recording. Just stop for some sonic as you see on the right there. Ah, yes. Very nice. So now, one thing I, one thing I did notice about this is... So what actually just happened is it, it knew someone was behind me and so it gave me a rear detection alert. That might be annoying to some people just because it does do rear detection if you're not moving or if you even are moving. I would figure something like that would be best if, you, if you're backing up and you're getting close to something, which it would, it would work for that, but you don't want it doing it all the time, so I might turn that off. You need to calibrate it before. You need to calibrate it before actually being able to use the lane departure warning, which I haven't done yet but I will do so. But before we do that, I do wanna let you know that there is one quick thing you can do. If I push on this button right here, it'll actually 
take a snapshot of the front facing camera and the rear facing camera as an image file. Now we're actually about to hit a bump here in a second and you'll see that it stabilizes video pretty well. This camera doesn't shake around a lot, doesn't have a lot of motion blur and we're going to hit the bump now. It's a pretty big bump. It doesn't seem like it on the video just because the image stabilization is pretty good. One thing with having a dash camera that records the cabin of your vehicle is you can't even pick your nose now without somebody having video proof should they need it. I don't know why anybody would need video proof of you picking your nose, but you can't even do it now. See? Alright guys, we're back inside. Let's go ahead and take a look at more of the features that are available on the app. Alright, so when you first open the app, you're going to notice here at the top, you're going to have the name of your car as well as your camera and the option to add a new camera. At the bottom, you're going to have auto insurance and auto call. And at the top, you're going to have live view of the camera if you're connected. Then you have the alert to download the iRadar app. If you click this, it'll pull up the Cobra iRadar app store page. I'm going to close that out for now. That's a whole other video. And then you're going to have a settings page, which if you're connected to your camera, you're going to have all the settings that I showed you earlier on the dash cam directly in the app, but you have to be connected. Then you have a profile page and also a page that allows you to access your profile. Now you also have the option to add a new vehicle. So the app is definitely packed with stuff. You have a gallery if you're connected to see your most recent recordings, emergency recording and favorite recordings. It's not here because I'm not connected, but when you are, they all pop up right there. It's really cool. All right guys, so all in all, the Cobra SC201 dash cam is definitely something I would recommend. Now, I personally have never had a dash cam before, but with all of the features and services included with the SC201, like the app, the emergency services, it being able to automatically call someone if you were to get into an emergency situation, I definitely would recommend this. Thank you guys for checking out the video. Thank you to Cobra for sponsoring this video. And as always, I'm Nathaniel from Dragon Blogger, and I'll see you guys on the next video.